We're installing a new stretch of electric fence and using a solar powered fence charger. Want to come along for the ride? We have everything we need? We got it. For sure. Mommy, what is we got this? It. Hot wire, charger, other stuff, whatever Mom, what it is. This? And those are the stakes that we'll put the hot wire on. You ready? Turbo is a great little farm dog, except he cannot figure out how to jump on the back of the truck, so we have to give him a little help. And Dozer isn't much better, except we don't really trust him not to jump off the back, so he gets to ride inside in my spot. He actually going. He's down to the pasture. Huh? We're not going very far. So we're down here in one of our lower pastures. Uh, you can see our house is right up there, not too far away. We just came down here in the truck. Um, but most of our property is bordered with barbed wire and that works great. Now our one problem is that we have some horses and the neighbors have some horses. And one of our really good horses likes to flirt with the neighbor's horses and so she'll back up to the fence and squeal and kick out. And she's cut her legs really badly several times. So we're trying to prevent that. So the way we're doing that is by installing a single stretch of hot wire, electric fence. And this will just give her a harmless little shock and save us a lot of money in vet bills. So we're starting with these little uh, stakes and they were pretty inexpensive and you just poke them into the ground. And that's the first step as we're putting those all along this edge of fence. Kirby. So I'm sure a lot of people are wondering why we use barbed wire um, when animals do get cut in it sometimes. And honestly, it's just the most cost effective option when you're fencing a lot of land. So we don't have that much. We only have 60 acres, but you know, if you're going to go buy some of the cool white fence or the plastic fence or um, the board fences, that adds up really, really fast. So barbed wire is the easiest, most cost effective option. And honestly, we don't have a lot of issues with it. Our cows really never get cut in it and rarely ever have we had horse issues with the barbed wire. The horses just learn to stay away, except when you have the occasional mare, AKA flirty girl horse. And yeah, that's what we're dealing with right now. So we have three different pastures we've divided our land up into and we kind of rotate them around and the horses and cattle have been grazing this pasture for a couple weeks now. And it's really drying out, so we're probably gonna move them over because um, we try not to overgraze it. It's an ant pile. And like on, like on, in, on it, there's like a cave. Is it a red ant pile? Oh. Look at yeah. it. Don't Look put your big, foot in there. Look how big that hole is. Uh, they go in there with all their little town is underneath there. So we're reusing some of the old fence that was kind of torn down by the wind. And you're sure tying it together will work, huh? Like it'll actually pass the current all the way through. Yeah. Just a simple knot. And tie a knot back on top of itself in both ways. Oh. So then you pull together. And that's enough? And you hold it. Huh. You can see this is just a, a rope, but it has some stainless steel strands in there. And that's what carries your current, or carries the voltage. Huh. So if you want to use a wood fence, you can use these plastic insulator things, which we did prior and they work okay. It's just because we want to keep the horses off the fence, farther away from the fence, we opted for these little individual stakes this time. What is this tubing thing for? So when tying off to something, you want to make sure you're insulated. This rubber insulation here will keep this wire off of the fence. Wood is not a very good insulator. When, especially if it's wet. 
so it'll ground out your system. So now we're just gonna pull it tight because we want this thing to be off the ground. We don't want to have any chance of this wire touching grass anywhere. So if it touches the grass, then it stops working, right? Yep. Which is not what we want. This is also why I married an electrician because this is not my forte. So why did we do solar? Because we don't have any electricity down here. So this thing, solar panel right here, will charge a battery that's internal to this, mm -hmm. and then it'll run the power out right here. So as long as we keep this in some sun, pointed towards the sun, we're just going to hook up our hot wire right here. Of course, we want to make sure the switch is off when we're doing all this. Oh yeah. And we're going to hook up our ground wire. Right here. That's pretty handy because it's designed to sit right on top of a T-post. Oh, but we don't have a T-post, so we're gonna we go. stick it on the barbed wire fence T-post, but it still reaches. And that can just go anywhere on the fence as long as it's connected. So we're gonna take our ground wire right here. Because we're on a T-post that's metal, it's driven into the ground, the T-post is gonna provide us with a good ground. So the main thing we need to pay attention to here is that we get on hooked onto something that's not painted. We're gonna kind of point this guy with that solar panel to the south so that it can get a good view of the sun throughout the whole day. Now the tricky part is gonna be turning this bad dog on without touching the wire. So we got this green flash, and that, don't touch it while you're touching it. Here. We got this green flash here. That's the pulse that it sends out every single time that flash goes off. So if you touch that fence right there. I don't know, that'd be probably go viral. It'd be good for the channel. So hot wires aren't something you just put up and walk away from and never do anything with it again. You gotta check these things regularly. You gotta make sure it's not getting grounded out somewhere. You gotta make sure something didn't fall up against it or a tree branch or a piece of, you got a big tall thistle weed or something growing up underneath it. It's gonna stop working. And then it's no longer gonna serve the purpose that you wanted to have it originally. So how often should we check it? Probably at least every few days. Here comes one of our horses right now. Come on, Dodo. Don't touch the fence. Oh, you can get through. Don't touch the hot fence. Come on, Dodo. You can do it. You can do it, Dodo. Oh. Come here, buddy. Dodo struggles with life sometimes. Mommy, this my tiger, my tiger almost got lost because it fell on my car. Turby, you gotta figure out how to get in there like a real ranch dog. This isn't gonna fly. Oh, there you go. Oh, Load up, Dodo. Come on. Load up, Dodo. Load up. You can do it. Come on. This is like the hardest part of the whole project. So we've had our horse that likes to get into trouble. She's been locked up in solitary for a couple weeks um, so she wouldn't cut her legs. So now that we have the fence fixed, we can go and let her out and she will be very, very happy, won't she? Yeah. You're free, Kate, out of jail. There she goes. For all the stories about life on our Wyoming homestead, plus tons of homesteading tips and tricks. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified when we post a new video every Tuesday.